Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series. Just before I made this video, my channel hit the 100 subscriber milestone, and I want to thank everyone for your support. Your continuous support is my biggest motivation to continue to make these high quality videos. At the end of my last video of making a 3D solar system animation, I said, I said that I was going to talk about camera in the next video. After that, I got some feedback and decided to make this video to address that. And I promise that I'll talk about camera in the next video. However, in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a wilder version of the solar system 3D animation with Yersna Engine. So, let me run our previous code from our last video. And in the previous 3D solar system animation uh, that I created, I made some assumptions, including one, it takes the same amount of time for all the planets to revolve around the sun, at one time, as you can see here, all the planets are orbiting the sun, revolving the sun at the same time. Uh, and two, the trajectories of all the planets are on the XZ plane. Some may argue that it is not really 3D animation, although it is, because you have only uh, the X and Z coordinates revolving involved instead of the X, Y, and Z. To address this argument, I'm going to show you in this video how you can include all three coordinates in the trajectories of the planets. Also, I'm going to get rid of the assumption that it takes the same amount of time for all the planets to revolve around the sun uh, one time, and we're going to let each planet have its own revolving period. All right. So let me close this. Let's switch to a blank slate, and we want to first import our modules. So we want to import Yersna, or from Yersna import star, now we can also import NumPy. We're going to be using NumPy. So import NumPy as NP. And we can create a window. So let's create our window. We write app is equal to Yersina. And we can create a sun. So our sun is going to be equal to entity module. And the module is going to be equal to a sphere. And now we have another parameter. This parameter is going to be our color. So color is going to be equal to color dot, and then what other, whatever color you're going to be using. So the color is going to be yellow, and scale is 1.5. And then we also write app dot run. And so when I run this, uh, run these few lines of code, I will have a sun in the center. All right. Great. And now that we have our sun, let's add in our other planets. So I'm going to copy and paste this sun entity uh, nine more times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now I just have uh, my nine other planets, and I'm just going to make some small adjustments. Instead of sun, this is going to be Mercury. Uh, let's see. Uh, Venus. Earth. Uh, Mars. Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, oops, Neptune, Nep Neptune, and lastly we have Pluto. And I also want to change these colors. I don't want each planet to be the same color. Uh, this is going to be gray. You can of course change these colors to whatever you like. These colors, your colors don't have to be the same as mine. Well, I'm just going to be using these colors for now. Violet this is going to be red. Uh, white. <clears throat> cyan. Gold. And pink. And I also want to change the scale. I don't want each planet to be the same size. So I'm going to be uh, trying to make the scale of each planet proportional to its real size. So I made Mercury 0.2, Venus 0.3, Earth 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we'll have Pluto as 0.2. So I'll save this. And now that we have our planets down, we can create our update function. And remember that this update function is called once per frame. So define update. And we want to create a global variable, which is t. So 
uh, underneath where we create our planets, we could write t is equal to negative np dot pi times, or no, yeah. So it's just equal to negative np dot pi. So that's what we initialize it to. And in our update function, we can write global t, and we create a global t variable. And every single time this uh, update function is run, so every frame, we want to increase our t variable by 0 0.01. And we want to create an angle variable, so angle is equal to np dot pi times 40 divided by 180. And since we have nine planets, um, and 360 degrees, 360 divided by nine is 40 degrees. All right. So now that we have this down. Let's create movement uh, for our first planet. So we will have a radius variable. This is equal to one. An n variable is equal to zero, and we use the angle multiplied by n uh, to separate our two neighboring planets. So we have n is equal to zero, and we have period or PD is equal to four. So PD is a parameter related to the revolving period of a planet. The larger PD is, the faster it revolves, um, and the less time it takes to revolve around the sun one time. So we have PD is equal to four. And we're going to have mercury dot y dot y is going to be equal to np dot sign period times t plus angle times n and lastly multiplied by the radius. And now we could do this for mercury dot z is equal to np dot sine instead of cosine pd dot t or pd times t plus angle angle times n times radius cool. and now that we have this down for mercury let's do this for venus so radius is equal to 1.4 uh, n is going to be equal to 1 pd is 3 venus dot y is equal to np dot cosine period times t plus angle times n times radius Venus dot Z is equal to NP dot sign period times T plus angle times N oops times radius. Now we also want to do this for uh, the X coordinate. So Venus dot X is equal to Venus dot Y times NP dot sign angle times n and so start from venus we're going to tilt the trajectory of the plane so that it's not just on the xy xz or yz plane anymore now uh, it will be a plane determined by x y and z so we also want to add in our venus dot y is going to be equal to venus dot y times np dot cosine angle times n and we have this, so I have this for Venus. I'm going to copy this chunk of code for the rest of our planets. So I'm going to paste this here. And now we could do Earth. We'll change the radius to 1.8. And it's 2. The period is going to be equal to 2. And I'll quickly change these variable names. Earth, Earth, Earth. And we could just leave everything else. Oops, this is Earth. So we have Earth, we'll do Mars, uh, then we'll do Jupiter, so I'll change this to Mars. Mars. And I'll change this radius to uh, Mars will be 2.2, and will be 3. The period is going to be equal to 1. Uh, I'll do Jupiter now. So Jupiter is going to be 2.6. N is 4. Period is 3. Jupiter. Jupiter. Alright. Okay. We have Jupiter. Uh, let's do Saturn. Saturn, the radius will be 3. Uh, 
uh, this would be 5, 5, Venus, nope, not Venus, this would be Saturn, oops, Saturn, Saturn. Saturn. Cool. Now we have radius. Instead, this would be 3.4. N is going to be 6. 3.4, 6. Purity is going to be 2. Venus, or this would be Uranus. Uranus. Alright, so you have Uranus. And let's also do. Neptune and Pluto. So we'll do Neptune and Pluto. Let's see. Now for the radius, this is going to be 3.8. And this is going to be 7. Period is going to oops, oops, no. Period is going to be 5. I'll change this to Neptune. Neptune. And lastly, for Pluto, I'll change this radius to 4. Oh, this should be 4. N will be 8. The period will be 4. I'll do Pluto. 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 Got Pluto. Pluto, Pluto, great. So I'm going to save and run this. This is all we should need for now. So I'll save and run this. And great. So now that we have uh, our code working, we said we see that this is a wilder version of the 3D solar system animation with some of the restraints lifted from the previous version. And I hope you like it. You can of course fiddle around with some of these values to change uh, how this looks, but that's pretty much it, and I hope you like it. So this is the end of the video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.